lamps casting a mysterious glow on a lonely tree. The Japanese garden is the picture-perfect location of peace and serenity till Mike Hoyland steps in. Enter Mike Hoyland and his mad cat science experiments that's causing ripples in the middle of the Japanese garden. How did you get into this? Like, why make science experiments a career? I find a lot of the things I do greater than me. And I find messing about with molecules and atoms sort of a very, a very spiritual experience. And so it's wonderful to think that I have been made out of basic atoms and I'm so complicated and that when I die I will simply go back to nature as they say my carbon will be used by insects and by other creatures that is perfectly satisfying to me I think that's really lovely but my motivation my main motivation for doing it is an enormous amount of work is to turn people onto learning not necessarily onto science but on to learning. Where were we? I know. We just had a large explosion. And what better place to impart his knowledge than at the Japanese garden, where thousands of people have turned up to catch the Leonid meteor shower. Stargazers were hoping to catch streams of light dancing across the sky because of the falling meteors. The phenomenon was expected to take place in the wee hours of the morning. So while they wait, Mike entertains them with his explosive performance. What's the inspiration behind these experiments? Well, the inspiration is, is often what you, uh, you want a theme, you want to show something. So then you look for the experiment to illustrate that. Uh, I've got some potassium iodide. Now the iodine is going to swap. It's going from the potassium, which is a metal, to the lead, which as you know is a metal. You see that? Probably the larger inspiration, they both go together, is how spectacular the thing is. So if it's got the wow factor, obviously, you're going to use that and think of all the ways, all the excuses you can have for using it. I suppose you must wear gloves and all sorts of uh, protective coatings, otherwise you die. I don't do anything just gratuitously, so I say. There's always a really good scientific reason, and then, of course, it goes bang, and it goes flash, and all sorts of things. You have to have a little bit of an excuse to do it. How different is one experiment from the next? Well, they're, they're very different, and, and they illustrate different things. But the big difficulty I had when I started doing this sort of work was to know when to shut up, because there are so many things that you could use one experiment to illustrate and talk about. You've got to decide exactly what you're going to talk about and just keep it to that. 99% of the energy comes off as light. Now, light energy is electromagnetic energy. These experiments range from the dazzling to the downright dangerous. So have you experienced any accidents while putting together these experiments? Not many, no. No, I'm very, very careful. And I still have five fingers and five toes and, right. you know, all my limbs, so it's not been too bad. Uh, some of the experiments on stage, they look pretty dangerous, I've actually. I've had some, uh, some near misses, not on stage, though. Not in front of others. And that's a good thing. So audiences can catch more of his performance as the larger-than-life scientists will be performing on Thursday and over the weekend at the Science Centre. Science!